Welcome. To Arcade Audio. Welcome, welcome to Dilton Paul. I'm Johnny. I'm Spencer. Here on Dilton Paul, we go on Wikipedia. We click random article. And we talk about it. Yeah, we do. Uh, Johnny, I have a question for you. Okay. Did you know that um, two days before anyone's listening to this was my birthday? Hold on. <laughs> Isn't your birthday Saturday? It is Sunday. Okay. Okay. Then I, did, I didn't. I thought it was three days. Yeah. That's okay. neither here nor there, but it's just I'm, I'm 30 now. Uh, hey. I will have been 30 at this point. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. Uh, so, sp- you're, speaking you're, of someone from the other side. I was going to say, do you have any advice for me? It sucks. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> okay, I'll try to... I'll, I'll just jump in the freezer and <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Freeze wipes myself. Oh, I read this... Nora. Freeze. I read this thing today. Okay. And it was just it was just like a screenshot of like a, a headline of an article. Okay. And... Um, the the headline said your brain realizes that you're dead after you've died because it's still like working as your body's shutting down <sighs> and then the person who took that screenshot just wrote ah something to look forward to <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think about that every once in a while like when i'm playing a video game i think about it more often because i don't kill people in real life Mm -hmm. but in video games i'm doing it constantly sure which is the objective yeah which kind of wears on me a little bit like morally speaking and more and more (laughs) these days you know well so the point is i'm playing the new assassin's creed game and i'm just constantly going around just like murdering people from you're an assassin i'm a the the creed that's the creed of the assassin (laughs) is to assassinate and it seems to me maybe i'm just misinterpreting the the images but it seems like in a lot of the cases when he's doing stealth assassinations he like it's usually from behind he'll like punch them in the balls like between the legs and then stab them like through the guts basically and maybe i'm mistaken but it There's certainly no seems sure. like that's what he's doing. And I'm like, man, what a fucking gruesome, terrible way to go out, right? Like, the last thing you do is just like, ooh! That sucks. Yeah, so... Uh, that kind of reminds me, there was this podcast that I listened to a long time ago. I don't remember what it was. Probably Radiolab. Okay. And they did this, like, experiment on kids. I don't remember what the purpose was <laughs> specifically, but I, they, I remember they, they were like... it was It was testing, like... I don't know how comfortable kids were with, like, Putting others in dis- in a situation of discomfort. Sure. So there were like three things. There was a teddy bear, mm-hmm. a Furby, okay. and a hamster. Okay. And they were like, okay, uh, here's this teddy bear. Hold it upside down as long as you can. Okay. And they were like, uh, can I? Can I? When can I stop? This sucks. This is boring. They they were just they were holding it until their arms were tired. Sure. Sure. And they held a Furby upside down, and the Furby, when it's held upside down, will say like, <laughs> "Help me, me scared." Oh. And the time like drastically dropped. It was like it went from like, you know, <laughs> Two forever and to yeah, uh, to like and then thirty seconds. They did it with a hamster, and it was like ten seconds. The kids were like, "Nope, can't do that." Uh, That's good. Yes, but it's interesting. I was that, so worried that you were gonna say. Like, and they loved that one. Yeah, the Furby they had the problem with because they spoke English or something. Uh, but it's it's interesting that such as there was such a steep decline from teddy bear to Furby, and I feel like right. even with me, I would feel bad like holding a Furby upside down, yeah. which is so weird. So that so that's like the video game thing where yeah. it's like I don't even yeah. want to kill these pixels. Yeah, right. So and strange. I've been finding myself uh, in previous Assassin's Creed games. I've played the majority of the franchise. Uh, okay, and, no need to brag. And, and Far Cry and all these things are all the same game, basically. And a lot of the mission, or a lot of the like side quests will just be like, "Oh, here's a camp full of like you know um, soldiers or whatever." Uh, you and here's the three objectives: like find this chest, find this blah blah blah, whatever. And you don't have to kill everybody, but most of the time I would just kill everybody because yeah. uh, you know clean sweep, whatever. Now I'm finding myself like if I can avoid killing anybody, I will. That's I'll, like take I, up my target and then just leave. That's why I loved the game Thief. Okay. Uh, because it's more about sneaking around. The whole the whole thing is that if you have to fight someone, You're you fucked up. Yeah. If you if you have to kill someone, you fucked up. I like that. So the the most that you're supposed to do is like knock someone out. Okay. Yeah. This game does let you knock people out. I found out. That's great. It's it, it makes me feel a lot better. Uh, you know, I'm playing the new Pokemon game, which I'm really enjoying a lot, yeah. quite honestly. Uh, but there's part of me that's like, man, it'd be great if you could like. Somehow, if they could make a version of this game where you don't have to make them fight, but you could still become buds with your with your dudes, okay, and like they could still grow and evolve. You know what it would be is you would you would be buds with your dudes, 
but then your dudes, instead of battling each other, would play Pokemon cards. <sighs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> they made a Pokemon card Game Boy game, which is yeah, so it like ruled. I had it. I, I and you can buy it on the eShop. Maybe I played the I played a, a some percentage translated version ROM <laughs> when I was a kid. It's like, good. The game, though, is at the time when it came out, like in the early state of. Well, I don't know that the games changed that much. The card game itself. It's kind of a busted card game. And back then, especially before they realized it, it's easy to win if you know what you're doing. Sure. It's funny that, um, and it's the same with magic. Uh, th- th- they just ha- the backs of the cards have to look the same forever. Yeah. And that is so fucking funny to me. Yep. Like, like here's the coolest best image we could come up with in 1998. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, 30 years later, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or 20? Uh, 20. Yeah, 20 I guess 20 for magic or for uh for Pokemon. A little longer for magic. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's that's just it. That's yeah. just what we got now, huh? Mm-hmm. There's even, I think I mentioned this to you before, but basically on the, if you look at the back of a magic card, it's kind of hard to tell, but on the part that says deck master at the bottom, Mm -hmm. you can see a little bit of a big pen mark that just never got caught, you know, when they went to printers and now it's too late. You want to get an article? (laughs) Yeah, I guess. I mean, I could talk about, you know, Wizards of the Coast trading card game properties from the early nineties all you want. I could talk about Wizards of Waverly Place. I barely know what that is. It's a TV show. Mm -hmm. Is it a Harry Potter type? Deal? It's a. It's certainly a Harry Potter type. Mm, it's a uh, Disney thing, right? Yeah, I think the premise was like it's three kids who live in like Greenwich Village in New York with okay. their parents or whatever, and they're all magic, and they have to go to school, but only the best one gets to stay magic. Yikes! Right? Do do they just do the wizarding community just pick three tykes? All you know what I mean? Like I think it's like one per family, basically. Oh, they're all they're all family. siblings. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. God, can you imagine that? That sucks. And would, would, do they also know like who gets picked? And then that can't be the premise, right? I'm pretty sure that's the premise. What a shitty premise to start with. Yeah, it's like immediately what a cutthroat premise. Immediately pitting the kids against each other. Yeah, I don't like that. Speaking of things that are not cutthroat, have you finished Bake Off? I did finish the new season of Bake Off. Okay, no, obviously no spoilers. What do right. you think? Uh, I'll I won't A or A plus. Uh, yeah, the whole season was very good. And I was just consistently shocked. Start like half, starting maybe halfway through the season until the end. I was just constantly yep. in a state of shock. It's great. It's the best show. Yeah, it's the best show that there is. Very, very good. I mean, there were people that I was saying who I thought were going to get voted off, who ended up doing very well, and and vice versa. And it, it was it was a fucking roller coaster. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Yep. Uh, oh, also speaking of shows uh, that you started getting me to watch, you understand what I meant. Uh, Mr. Science Theater 3000. Yep. I'm watching the new season. Yep. Having watched hardly any of it before ever, it's really good and there's, really funny. There's a bunch of old episodes on Netflix, too. I, I'm going to watch them soon. I, I have always loved it since I was a kid. It's right. like... I, I've always wanted to like it, but I've never had the patience to sit down and really watch it. It's a lot of it. fun. It's great. Yeah. That Mac and Me episode was That's what fucking killing me. pretty nice. <laughs> Dude, in a later episode, someone brings something in and then... One of them just goes pretty nice, yeah, and I, it fucking got it, me. It got me too. Yeah, <sighs> pretty good stuff, pretty, man. Pretty nice. Pretty <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I, and also what was fun about that is I've always wanted to watch Mac and Me because of what's his name? Yep, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. Same. Doing the and bit. I got to like knock it out and not have to. Yeah, it was it not was, have to watch it. It was two birds of one stone. It was so good. I yeah. thought the same thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay. Well, the article this week is Mac and Me. I also didn't realize there was so much of a McDonald's like tie-in with that. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder if that's why it's called Mac and Me. I, I, that's absolutely what I wonder. But there's so little payoff for them. Yeah, like they say the word Mac once, mm-hmm. and it's a shitty acronym. Or it's not a even macronym. A, it's a macronym. It's, an, it's it and is it, an acronym. You know what the difference is? Uh, I do. Now that you mention it. Okay. Well, we don't want to talk about okay. it. <laughs> drunk on love, not not drunk in love. Oh. Uh, it's a Rihanna song. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Drunk in love, I believe, is a Beyonce. That's song. that was my inclination. Drunk on love. <laughs> oh my god! It's a song by Barbadian recording artist Rihanna from her six. Is this like a Berenstein Berenstain thing? Whoa! <laughs> from her sixth studio album, Talk That Talk, from 2011. The song was written by Esther Dean, Tracy Hale, uh, Michael S. Erickson, and Tor Eric Hermanson of Stargate. What? <laughs> that's that's all I've got. Who did he play? Uh, and 
Baria Querish, Romy Croft, Oliver Sim, and Jamie Smith of the XX. I assume those are some music factions of some yeah, sort. Yeah, right, right. Um, this sounds like a, a lot of people went into the making of this song. A power ballad, Drunk on Love, samples the melody of the XX's song Intro, which was included on their debut album, XX. Aren't they a rock outfit? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I... Uh, upon the release, the song charted at number 55 on the South Korean what? Gaon International chart and number 153 on the UK singles chart. So they're not very good, I would say. Well, this is the Rihanna song. I'm going to play a little sample. Okay, give us some sort of a song. I've uh, never heard that song. I, I for sure have not. <sighs> yeah, it just didn't really hit me. It's it was very samey. It was a very boring 24 seconds of music. Yeah. Which I feel like 2011 was kind of like that. Sure. You know what's fun is going back and listening to those uh, state of pop mashups. You know what I'm talking about? The DJ Earworm. What? No, oh, dude. What is this? You're going to love this. DJ Earworm. DJ Earworm, this fucking dude on okay. YouTube, okay. makes a mashup of every year of like the biggest hits of the year. Okay. And it's so much fun. First of all, it's something I look forward to every year. It's like, let's see what we did. For sure, for sure. But then it's it when it, when they come out, it also is fun to like be like, what was going on in 2010? Right, right. Oh man, it's a trip. How far back does he go? I want to say I want to say somewhere around 2010. 2000 2009 2010. Is maybe. he working on going backwards? Uh, there there, there are there are a few others. It's choice like, years, like yeah. 88, 94. Um and and like I'm trying to think, but yeah, there there are a few, but okay. That's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just feel like music was bad around that time. Just across the board. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, because that's like right before I moved here, kind of right when I got here. I remember the big songs when I got here. Um, Blurred Lines. Oh, Blurred God. Lines was huge right around when I moved here. Maybe maybe a year or two I'm after. I'm so glad but no like, one talks about that song anymore. Same. It, it fell off pretty quickly. Homeboy God. was just in the fucking Thanksgiving parade though. And I was like, what is yeah. this? I think it was no, it wasn't the Thanksgiving parade. It was Dancing with the Stars. That mm, which is tracks a little more. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out which one tracks more. Um, yeah, but it's like this yeah. sucks. He's like a skeezy guy and mm-hmm. whatever. And that song is obviously like the worst. The worst. Yeah. Uh, then it's weird that nobody talks about how Pharrell was like happy. No, the song Happy. Oh, I was gonna say like well, that was him, right? Yes. Okay. But he was like I was checked out. Huge and in, in blurred lines. He like oh, produced it and has like he like sings on it. Oh well, I listened to the song twice. I think so. I don't recall. Yeah, sure. Um, was it around the same time as Happy? Am I mistaken? Happy was later. Okay. Happy was later. I was gonna say what a crazy year for him. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he's he's just been around for like making 30 years? like legit hits forever. He's like four hundred years old. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, he's a vampire. Um, he was in what what band was he in? Nerd. Like? Nerd. Yeah. Which. Okay. Dude, you know about you know about their deal, right? What's their deal? They released like a rap album, uh-huh. and someone was like, "Yeah, it's just not quite right." Okay. So then they fucking re-released the album. They all learned how to play instruments and recorded a rock version of the album. Holy shit! And re-released what it. The fuck. So that's the one you've heard the rock version of uh, the album. Did they release two versions of the same album? Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yep. Wow, it's really cool. Yep. Um, was that like their debut album or, or, or maybe? Okay, man, probably, probably. I don't know about that. Yeah, man, that's cool. That's cool shit. Um, so like same lyrics, they just like, yeah, man, uh, the Beastie Boys kind of not the same thing at all, but are in the same ballpark. They were like a rock band or like a punk rock band who were getting no traction or something. They're like, well, fuck it. We're just gonna do rap. Yeah. That's so strange. It's really strange. How you just like do that. Or like, I mean, if you listen to Pink Floyd's first album. Oh yeah. It's They're it's rapping. like it's yeah. Um, isn't it funny how all like old school rap is about like going over to your friend's house and eating a good meal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Beastie Boys early stuff was pretty. Well, even before the Beastie Boys, no, even, I'm talking about like, like Sugar Hill Gang and stuff. Yeah, it's exactly, like, exactly. Like legit, that's what it's about, and it's like <laughs> we're just having a good time. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> just like kind of a like a, it's almost like a diary or something, you know. It's just like yeah, yeah. We just had a good time today, and and I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> and that's great. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, Pink, Pink Floyd's first album was like super '60s, like like weirdo like rock 
psychedelic stuff. Okay. It's like very goofy. And then, you know, 300 albums later, they released the wall and <laughs> it's weird how like a decades will have like a, a sound to them. Yeah. Like, what is that? Is that just everyone glomming on to the, to like what's selling at the moment? And why is it a, why is it the nineties and not 85 to 95? Is that, is I that think it's probably just cause it's cleaner in our heads. So do you think you could follow a trend? Do you think there's like from 85 to 95, this was the thing, you know, like, is it, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to get real, like, actual accurate with it, yeah, that's probably what you would do. Because, I mean, same thing with fashion, too, or, like, with a lot of stuff. Like, how many times will you see something and be like, oh, man, that looks so 80s, and it'll be, and like, 95. 92. Yeah, yeah, right. It's cra- It's What's crazier than the early 90s being the 80s is the early 2000s being the 90s. Yeah. That trips me the fuck up. The early 2000s is, like, is not the 90s. Yeah. Like, the decade is, like, the last three years of the actual decade and the first five of the next. Yeah. The 2000s is, like... Um, it's like what everyone in the '90s thought life would be like in the 3000s. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of that. Reminded me of like frosted tips and and things like that. I feel like I'm seeing a lot more of more women than men, um, uh, but dyeing their hair like non natural colors and nobody like caring or freaking yeah. out about it. I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I really like, which it's a little more natural, but I love that gray color. I, that that I think rules. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any anything like that, I'd do it if it wouldn't make me look so sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't give a Paul. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've I've been seeing a lot in like wrestling. Just does it. Every woman has a crazy colored hair and doesn't like. No one even talks about. It, doesn't mean anything. And I feel like that can't be what it is influencing it. But maybe that's like. Well, it's all part of the same. Yeah. Which is so crazy because like 10 years ago, it's just like, oh, wow. Well, purple hair, huh? I mean, whoa, uh, pink. <laughs> and that, and that's her name too. Like, <laughs> you know. Uh, she's still around doing stuff, right? Yeah, probably. Probably, yeah. I don't know. Keep whatever. Go go for it. Uh, who else is doing stuff these days? You know, it's, it's crazy to think like Rihanna – has been around for since we were in high school. Umbrella came out when we were in high school. Yeah, like what, two thousand four ish? No, two thousand six. Two thousand six, I'd say. Sure. And like Lady Gaga, same thing. Like they've just been around for so long. Hmm. Isn't it? Like who? I would love. To, I can't wait to see like who the because Lady Gaga is sort of like the Madonna for our generation or whatever. Right? Sure, I'd, like, I'd, I'd say that. So I would love to see when we're like eighty. Who that Who the Madonna is for us Like Or for that For that who, generation Who that generation's Lady Gaga will be Oh you know what I mean Like yeah. that That you know Icon Right that icon Yeah I don't know Like things are gonna get Pretty wild right Yeah I mean I guess You know Britney Spears Is still around too But not in the same way mm-hmm. I mean she's been around Longer but not in the same I feel like she didn't Really have the staying power That like Lady Gaga has Like you know Britney yeah. releases a new album and I get excited and no one else does and it's not great and I get disappointed and no one else does. Yeah. <laughs> and Lady Gaga releases a new album and I get excited and everyone else does and it's good and everyone agrees. Well, maybe Britney had to happen for Lady Gaga to happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're probably like, not wrong. I don't know. I mean, when was the last good Penn and Teller album? You know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, those guys are still, you know, putting out material and I, mean, I get excited for it. But no one else does. And um, now what uh, Teller has just done is <laughs> he's caught the bullet in his <laughs> teeth. The spoken word. Pendulette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he lost a lot of weight, huh? Yeah. I, I, uh, I enjoy their acts and their deal, but I think they're both shitheads. It's easier to tell that Penn's a shithead because he talks so goddamn much. He talks enough for the two of them, don't he? Yeah, yeah. And I used to be real into them, like when they had their bullshit show. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then and then before the internet happened, we needed people like that. Yeah, but they had a real, they had a real shitty bend on a lot of their stuff. Yeah, but I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. Uh, But (laughs) so in addition to that, like first of all, we were younger. I, I I I agree, but also now we know how to like be that way without we know how to do the good things they were doing without being the bad part of it. Yes, you well know? we do. Most people, you don't. and I do. Yeah, right. Uh, but like, yeah, bef- 
I don't know. The internet's helped and hurt in a lot of ways. Because it's helped pro- pro- proliferate a lot of the, like, like anti-vaxxing type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But it's also gotten me to get really excited about raising my crunchlings for Captain Crunch. <laughs> teaching them sports and... Uh, Driving a go kart. I don't really remember all the things you could do with the crunchlings, but yeah, teach them sports. I feel like we talk about them a lot. The crunchlings. They, I have enough. very fond memories of the crunchlings. What was your favorite sport to teach a crunchling? I feel like they ran. Yeah, a lot of track and field, huh? Mm-hmm. Decathlon, maybe. Yeah, because I can I can imagine their furry little bodies wearing like sweatbands on their wrists and stuff. I definitely picture them with a headband, a sweatband. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what the the wristbands are for the sweat wristbands. They're not. To keep your hands dry, you know what they're for? To wipe your forehead? Yeah. That's yeah. What, that's <laughs> Yeah, well, halfway through <laughs> me saying that, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't run, and Johnny does, so he probably knows the answer to this. I don't run that much. It's like I've just, do you know what treadmill's for? <laughs> it's not just for hanging shirts up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the weird thing is the one that you wear on your forehead is to wipe off your hands though yeah exactly it's it's a weird counterintuitive thing but i mean they were made in the 1800s so it's before we <laughs> knew what we were doing see you later if tom petty were playing at bush gardens and i already had passes yes i would go see tom petty <laughs> yeah there's not a ton of bands i would go see sure even if i was if like if i was already at bush gardens and they were like hey tom petty's playing like right now i'd be like no, probably not. I don't think I'm doing that. I'm going to go on Shikra. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect time to do rides. Um, I don't even know who would have to. It would have, it'd be ha- like if it was the Beatles or, you know, it'd have to be something massive. Jimmy Buffett. I'm, I might go see Jimmy <laughs> Buffett. Yeah. <laughs> I think in Jimmy all Buffett the time. Gardens is very good. I've known you. You've, that's the only concert I've ever known you to go to. That's almost certainly true. Yeah. Because once I started doing improv, I stopped going to concerts and then. Since then, I've developed this weird like mental block to going to them. Um, does Jimmy Buffett belong more in Bush Gardens or SeaWorld? <laughs> I think SeaWorld. That's hard to say. Because I feel like the way he dresses is, is a Bush Gardens thing. Just like real breezy. Yeah, you know? very loose, <laughs> linen-y stuff. Yeah, but right. at SeaWorld, he'd be with his friends, the dolphins and the stingrays yeah. and, and the, the sharks. You definitely have a point. Well, what's nice is those two parks are like sisters. Yeah. So he can just, you know, mm-hmm. take the secret tram between the two The light rail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of like what, what current band would be big enough for me to like see at Bush. If in your specific scenario where like we're at Bush gardens and they're playing in an hour, <laughs> right, they're playing like, it's the perfect time. Like we're eating lunch and like when we finish eating our like cake right across the, st- the uh, exactly. sidewalk, they're exactly. starting. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I don't think there's anybody sticks. No, no. <laughs> like if it was green day, I would, I would, I would hang out for like 25 minutes and then I'd be like, okay, cool. dang, like I just can't do it. Like the, it just doesn't hold my interest. This uh, is the problem. What if you the first twenty five minutes they only play American Idiot? I, I might be into that. What if they only play it, shenanigans? It, yeah, if it was yeah, like twenty first <laughs> century breakdown or whatever. Yeah. I'd like like two songs in, I'd be like, Okay, I think we're good here. It's cool to see you. <laughs> Thank you for playing Arcade Audio. Play more at arcadeaudio.net.